All right, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is walking you through a little demo of the API in action, uh, calling all of these functions, and then what I'm going to do next is actually uh, explain why I decided to implement all of the functions and the smart contract ultimately the way that I did. And so, as you can see here on my screen, this is Ganache. I have an instance already running. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I'll be coming out with videos in the future, but basically that's a blockchain running on my local machine. And so uh, what we're going to start off with here is demoing the first function, which is get fundraises. And again, if you recall, this basically just returns the array of fundraises. And I'll get to why I did that in a second, but here it is in action. I've already added, before uh, hitting the, the record button on this, I've already added one to the blockchain just to test that out. And so you can see here some previous calls that I did. And so what I'm going to do now is call the function that's responsible for adding a new uh, fundraise campaign. And so if these arguments don't look familiar to you or they don't make sense, um, take a look at the actual API for this function these are the the our actual the, the, the function signature these are the parameters for it and that's where I get that from so I went ahead and I created this new fundraise campaign and I'm gonna go ahead and get the fundraises again just to make sure that it's in there and in fact it is so we're looking pretty good um, and so the next thing that we're gonna want to do here is just get the specific one as I'm demoing here on the screen and you can see that I got it there so we're looking pretty good so far so the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually actually demo the donate uh, call here and so what we're going to do here is donate to the to the fundraise that has an ID of one and in this case we have that correctly and I'm going to be using a different account here that second account that you see on my screen that's going to be the quote-unquote user that does the actual donations and we're going to donate five uh, ether and so there you go um, that donation was successful so I'm gonna pull up the ganache blockchain again and there you go the, the balance is now decreased from for that specific user um, and so what I want to do now is is uh, demo the the last one withdraw which is the fun one and basically uh, I'm going to wit I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now so I'm gonna hit enter and then boom there you go I have now more money uh, my crowdfunding campaign was a success so that's it we're looking pretty good so let Let's look at the code. All right, so as promised, we're gonna take a quick look at the code, and the first thing that I wanna draw your attention to is the state. So the first thing here is an array of fundraisers. This basically is going to store all of our fundraisers. If you've been following through all of the videos in the series, this will be familiar to you. But the reason I chose this is because it's the simplest um, data structure that we can start off with. It might not be the best to scale, because if we're gonna have a list of about 10,000 fundraisers, that may get a little bit tricky or 100,000, whatever. Uh, but for right now, for our intents and purposes, this is gonna work really well. And so it's gonna be a fundraise, an array of fundraises with each element in the uh, list being a fundraise campaign struct. And so this is just a data structure that I put together to sort of encapsulate all of the data, at least the start, that we'll need to basically encapsulate a campaign. Um, and I guess I could take a quick step back. The reason I started with this too is because let's make believe that in order to display all of the fundraises on a homepage, we just need to get all of them. And this is sort of the data that we'll need to display on the homepage as well as in a specific specific page for any given fundraise. So that's why I created that. Now if, if I'll, I'll take a quick second here to, to take a step back. If none of this syntax looks familiar, don't worry. Just start to get your feet wet with it. Start to get more familiar with what a Solidity smart contract looks like. And over time, you'll pick up what, what you need to. And plus, I'll be coming out with videos in the future, so make sure you're subscribed to get those, uh, to, to, to get all of the most recent content that I'll be coming out with. That way you can level up and reach whatever goal it is that you're trying to reach. Next, we have this um, ID. And really quick, one thing I wanna highlight here is that this is uh, public. I decided to expose this because again, it offers a nice little getter, which I demoed before. That getter is the one that allows you to get a specific fundraise. Solidity automatically includes that. And I just wanted to make this one public. Uh, the next one is a private uh, state variable this one is not exposed and basically what we do here is we set an ID with the default value to zero and we use that ID as sort of a, a counter so whenever we add a new uh, fundraise campaign as you can see here we then go ahead and increment it and then we take that new ID um, and use it for the next one 
So that's that right there. Then we have a couple of events here. I'm not going to dive too deep into that right now. My main focus right now is the good stuff, which is all of the, the functions, really. So the next function is uh, get, get fundraisers. Actually, this is the first function. And really there's a lot happening here uh, but again if you're not familiar with solidity uh, don't don't get overwhelmed but but really this function is doing one thing it's just returning this and so if you're somewhat familiar with solidity you might be asking yourself you know why not just return this well it turns out that as of this recording um, a public state variable doesn't necessarily get a getter uh, so you have to write your own one and then that's what I did right here so this is all just syntax um, and as as I continue to, to add videos to this channel you'll get more familiar with what we're doing there uh, but now with this function uh, the next one is add fundraise campaign so this is the one that's uh, responsible for really adding or creating a, a new fundraise campaign and so it takes a set of uh, parameters here description goal name image URL and then we get into the logic of it Right, and the logic of it is pretty straightforward. So we increment the ID to do what I just spoke about a moment ago, and then we create the owner. The reason I create the owner as a payable is because down the line we're gonna want to uh, transfer. You don't have to, you know, this might not even be best practice, but depending on the team, but I decided to go down that route. Uh, and then we actually create the new campaign. And so if you're new to Solidity, this right here, whenever you have a reference data type or like a complex data type, you need to declare where this uh, data is going to live, whether it's in memory, storage, again, out of the scope of this video, but just something worth highlighting. Um, and so we end up creating the, the fundraise campaign struct. One thing that you might notice here is that the uh, number of arguments here does not map exactly to the number of arguments there. That's because the ones that are not passed in through here, we could either pass in as a default value, such as uh, current, um, and we can either get it from the message object like we did with the owner. And so um, that's the add fundraise uh, function. So again, a, a simple function that allows a user to basically add a new fundraise campaign to the blockchain. So this is a this is a fun one right here. The next one is another fun one. It's uh, donate, and it basically takes in a parameter and says, "Hey, give me an ID, and I'll sort of send your money over to that campaign." Except that's not what happens technically. So basically, what we do here is we take in uh, this fundraise ID, and from our state. Our storage we we get a specific fundraise and what we do here is we update it by reference so the current property I remember the current properties right here that basically takes into account how much money this uh, has this this fundraise campaign has so far so that then later down the line we can go ahead and and make sure we're sending the user the correct money um, and so another detail worth mentioning here is message.value and payable and so message that value starting off with this one uh, basically this contains the the amount of money that the user has sent and then payable simply says hey I'm a solidity function and I can receive some money and what's interesting about this is that you'll notice that we don't send the money directly to the user himself or herself what we do right here is the the smart contract actually hangs on to the money uh, until the, the user calls withdraws you'll see in a second but basically that's what's happening we're sending the money to the smart contract the smart contract then is the custodian and basically says hey I'm not gonna you know do anything with this money until you call withdraw which leads me to my last function here and again this takes in a fundraise ID one thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, for production level code this is not the best in fact most of this isn't but for our intents and purposes it works um, but again I, I, I wrote a little note here that says assume it exists this is an important note here uh, you, you don't want to basically assume that it exists in production people can pass in random IDs like a hundred uh, so that may not work in production and you could do something like a require but that's not what I'm gonna be covering in this video so that's why I left it as is to keep it simple that's really the goal with my videos is to keep things simple and, and, and to the point so that you can get the most value out of it um, possible so with this last function right here withdraw um, we're doing some you know the same thing that we did up here except we're we're now getting the owner and we're basically saying hey you know what let me actually check if you are the owner so that um, only the owner can withdraw because without this check um, basically anybody will be able to withdraw the money so we want 
to just make sure that 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 person is the the owner um, and I know I mentioned a while ago that I'm just assuming this exists this one was a little bit more illustrative so I decided to include this check right here um, so that's why I did that and then in solidity one cool way of, of sending money is calling the transfer method on a payable object so that's what we do here we send the current and then we reset that value and so I guess really taking a step back here um, this is just a general the general structure of solidity smart contracts you have some state variables some structs some events you also then have the function some of which can be private or external um, but yeah this this is this is pretty much it and so I wanted to keep it really simple really light as light as I possibly could um, so that you can again extract the most value that you uh, possibly could and so one other thing worth mentioning is that this smart contract implements the uh, withdraw pattern and so basically it's what you see here uh, we don't send the money directly to the user who's the owner of a specific fundraise the smart contract holds on to it and then we send it whenever the owner of the fundraise is ready to withdraw that money so I hope you got some value out of it I'll be coming out with some videos that are in a different format I just wanted to try this one out for this uh, specific video series so again stay tuned uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and talk soon